This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 in General's Evolution. This is the 0.3 beta, and the map is Lone Eagle. And before you ask, yes, you can download the 0.3 beta at the link in the description. So you don't need to ask for it, it's already there. As the blue China nuke in the top side, this is Cool Me. Their teammate, which is one of the developers for Generals Evo, is the Orange USA Super General. This is Seguro. And on the south side of Lone Eagle, playing as the purple GLA demo, this is Seekiff. And their teammate rounding out this 2v2 as the USA Laser General. This is EA. All right, this is version 0.3, freshly delivered a couple of months ago in February. And it features a huge number of changes. First of all, you may notice that there are some new colors. We've got kind of like this mint green. So amongst the many, many changes to the game, they also have just some like smaller changes like colors, additional colors for multiplayer they, uh, they have added a bunch of new units, some of which make it uh, maybe a little bit more Generals-like. I thought when they said that they were adding Chinooks that uh, those were going to be supply Chinooks, but no, you can just build Chinooks now. So you do have that option as a unit, but you do still have supply trucks. So some things are, you know, like Generals, and many things are still not like Generals. So once again... This is not aiming to turn Red Alert 3 into a slightly updated General Zero Hour. And again, I think that's probably due to the fact that there are just many engine limitations which make that uh, not quite possible. One of those being the GLA construction system, which, you know, is, uh, is a little bit like the Empire in Red Alert 3. But for those of you who are new to General's Evolution... Hopefully, we are going to have a good time, despite the fact that this is not a one-for-one -one copy of Zero Hour. And this is sort of becoming its own little thing. You'll see that, perhaps, with some of the new laser units coming out from the USA Laser General. And, uh, well, even with something as simple as the GLA windmills, which actually I don't see any windmills up just yet... Uh, engineers have been added, though, so that is how you capture buildings. Again, one of those differences between how the games work, and in this particular case, engineers will go off to capture those oil derricks. 2v2, but very passive openings from both sides. Airfield will be added on for Sigoro, and we'll have to see if he uh, is really going to be utilizing those super weapons or not. Oh, that is another change. Uh, each player can build up to three super weapons. So in generals, you can, I believe, have unlimited. I guess at some point the game will crash, but in theory, you can uh, you can sort of just keep building super weapons, and that's kind of a feature. Uh, I, some people probably don't like it. I always really enjoyed it growing up. I enjoyed just the pure chaos of having like ten scud storms. And there is definitely a lot of fun of just literally sitting on your base and scud storming your opponent to death without ever having to cross the map. But uh, maybe some people don't like that. EMP Patriot Missile going to be able to lock down a couple of these sentry drones. And it looks like Cool Me is going to be able to clean them up. So some light harassment coming in from EA, but ultimately it all gets shut down. Another new unit, the Mechanic. So this does repair vehicles. They've split the task of repairs between uh, the ambulance and the mechanic. So the mechanic heals vehicles, and the ambulance, as you may think, heals infantry. Kiff going to be given chase to Seguro's Humvees. Now, the mechanic did get taken down, so these Humvees are a little bit more vulnerable. Of course, they've got rockets inside of them. Rock Vs, still a very powerful combination, and the rockets do evacuate at least one of the Humvees before it gets cleaned up, and they are going to start targeting down those oil derricks as well. It looks like the supply stash will survive, so Kiff doesn't have to worry about that. His oil derrick may also survive as he gets some of his new flak tanks up to the high ground and crushes that attack. So already the early aggression not really working out for these players. Alpha Raptor, there are some new air units. I think uh, 
the Auroras are in, or maybe it's the Aurora variants that are new. Some of the differences between the version 2.1 and ver or version 0.21 and version 0.3. So this is still considered a beta version of the mod. It is not by any means final development. And uh, I think most people are playing this on Steam or Origin, but in the installation readme, in the readme, they do highlight some of the problems that exist if you are playing on the original CD version of the game. So I did not realize that there was that much of a difference, but apparently the CD version of the game does run at least a little bit differently under the hood. EMP locks down a couple of those Scorpion tanks, and the Flak tanks are here on the front line, shutting down the firebase, and the rest of these laser, these Guardian tanks, going to be coming forward. So that does look straight up out of Red Alert 3 in, the, in that particular case. A-10 Warthogs coming in, Kulmi and Seguro joining forces to push back this attack, and it looks like Kif is not going to be able to gain any ground here. A lot of losses on each side, and some people are not a fan of the over-the-top explosions and destruction uh, effects and debris, but uh, it looks like that is not something the developers have turned down. If anything, they maybe turned it up a little bit more. So uh, USA Super Weapon, it looks like, does have the Guardian tank. I'm not sure if that's across all factions or if it's just uh, USA Super Weapon. That's a change there. Propaganda Center coming in for Cool Me. We saw the Palace added on a good while ago. And uh, Black Markets. I believe there is no more limiting on the secondary economy. I think that was also one of the changes made in the most recent .3 version. EA looking to make some moves, but the Cluster Mine going to get dropped directly on top of him, pushing back across the bridge. EMP locks down three of the Laser Paladins, but nothing around here from our team on the north side to really shut that attack down. Expansion potentially coming up. No, that's just a supply truck as Kif moves back in, and he does crush the army of Sigoro. However, Cool Me coming in for the reinforce, and he's going to help Sigoro take control of his base and maintain control of this area. Can Kif actually do it? Kif with a good number of units, Flak Tanks and Scorpions both here, but the aircraft are just maybe a little bit too strong as Segura once again saved by Cool Me. Cool Me coming in as a great teammate to defend Segura's base. The attack is not stopping. Kip with an even larger army moving across the map, but it's coming in piecemeal, and Cool Me looking to help stop it once again. Presses forward, Rocket Squad's gonna be targeting down those nuke battle masters and taking them down as the army of Kif survives for a little while longer, but does not have the strength to press on forward. So one thing that they mentioned in the point .3 version uh, changelog is that they have re... is that they've made a whole bunch of balance adjustments, and it looks like this is one of those things that is still holding over from version point .21. It can be quite difficult to actually push through an area and uh, have enough units on the other side of it to keep attacking. It feels like army size is always not always an indicator because sometimes the units aren't super graceful, aren't super uh, agile, and do end up getting caught on each other. It feels like, and so there can be some difficulties with getting uh, with maneuvering an army. We'll put it that way. EMP comes through once again. Looks like uh, Spy Drone's getting sniped there. Humvees coming through. I think these are laser. Yeah, these are laser Humvees. So a lot of changes, a lot of new units. No tow missiles here, but laser Humvees. As it looks like the Battlemasters and the Gats joining forces to clean up those... Oh my gosh, I don't even know what that was. I think that was the, uh, the Super Weapon Aurora. It might be called the Alpha Aurora Bomber. As Cool Me going to be mush pressing forward, not waiting for the attack to come in. And one thing that's nice about those about those nuclear battle masters 
is you can just drive them into the heart of your opponent's army and let them do their work after they fall. Humvee gets sniped and the Laser Paladin on the edge of being taken out might get taken out on the retreat here as the Avenger also gets eliminated. All of the forces from EA get cleaned up. Another A-10 Warthog strike coming through. The rocket infantry a good bit behind the infantry or behind the tanks, rather. So they do get separated from the bulk of the army of Kif. And Kif, once again, having a lot of difficulty getting past this opening of Segoro's base. First particle cannon is here. And yeah, the Aurora Alpha Bomber. So you're seeing that come in and make some passes. A lot of power in the defense for Segoro. Having that quick airfield with the kind of airfield position he's got, having the quick runs that his aircraft can make is really helping out his his defense. I mean, to be honest, Segoro's ground army has been pretty lackluster this entire time, but he waits for his opponent's units to clump up and then he hits them with that aircraft. And the AOE on the aircraft is really strong, it feels like. Maybe it's just Segoro really knows how to play just all the right angles but Segoro coming out way ahead it feels like on the efficiency uh, tab considering the ground army that he has another difference I believe we do have I forget what the laser version of the tomahawk is but that is one difference is the laser general now has the particle tank which is the laser replacement for the tomahawk so that is one more difference between these generals and you guys will be happy to know that you now select your general in the game screen. You do not select your general once you spawn in. So in the old version, point two one, you would actually select your general. You would choose, like, yeah, say, USA, and then you would choose which general you wanted once you spawned into the game. But in this case, you actually choose USA Vanilla or Laser or Super Weapon or Aircraft from the menu like you do in generals and zero well in zero hour so lots of quality of life and small changes but it does feel like the fundamental the formula of big armies big macro being king is still the king here in version point three and that's one of the differences between General's Evolution and Zero Hour is Zero Hour for a big portion of the game you do have it all being about small groups of units, three, maybe four units at a time, and only a little bit later do you start seeing bigger clusters. I guess maybe China tends to be a bit more clumpy, but I feel like even China you have a lot of like two or three Gatling hit squads running around the map, or like one dragon tank on the right side of the map, and then two or three Gats on the left side of the map. A lot of small units trying to poke and prod your opponent, whereas General's Evolution is much more about big armies clashing in ways that look good in screenshots. Crossing a bridge, a dangerous thing. There's a firebase and a Patriot laser system, and the bridge detonates! Oh man, Cool Me did not plan for that. The splash damage harming him tremendously as his nuclear battle masters chain explode one to another. And wow, cool me, just blew his own army up. A bit unfortunate for him. We do actually have, I feel like, a stronger presence of infantry in General's Evolution. It's less, you know, quads and rocket buggies. More scorpion tanks. I guess you do have uh, flak tanks, which take the place of quads in this particular version. Mine's going to be absorbed a little bit here. Aircraft coming in for their pass, and this is it for the army. We'll see how much of Kif actually survives to face the front line of Segoro. Segoro happy to play the passive game as the particle tanks getting in on the action, burning through the army, but I don't think they have the rate of fire to stop Cool Me's massive Chinese army. However, his battle masters exploding on top of each other 
hurting his own forces and once again Coolmy's army explodes before he can actually do anything with it. Particle Cannon is here to chase away those last buggies and that is just the first of many Particle Cannons that Sigoro has. Two minutes and 14 seconds on the clock for Sigoro's next Particle Cannon. Sigoro transitioning into a much stronger ground army before he was entirely dependent on Cool Me to defend his ground. But now he's actually got a decent ground army here and uh, pretty tanky against these Marauders and the, uh, and the Rocket Buggies of Kif. Aurora comes back, strikes from the other side. A Guardian tank gets eliminated. And once again, Cool Me and Sigoro playing the defensive card. But, I mean, at some point, someone's going to have to cross the map and actually do some damage, right? It does seem maybe this map in particular because the bridges are destructible and you really only have one attack path that uh, it does become quite stalemate -y. EA burns through the War Factory and a chunk of the tanks. This would be a good time to strike, but if they can't deal with the aircraft just crushing their ball of army, then it's going to be difficult for EA and Kif to actually be able to make any meaningful progress. One click's coming in. It's going to be an anthrax bomb? Yeah, the anthrax bomb may be a bit of a miss there, but it does kind of coat the area next to the War Factory forcing Sigoro out of position. We'll see if EA and Kif can really do anything with that. At the current moment, I think the Anthrax is uh, not necessarily going to win the day. Cool me firing off the artillery. Tomahawk starting to make their way forward. The artillery striking down something. It looks like they maybe took out a particle cannon. I'm not sure. Aurora Bomb is coming through once again, hitting the tanks directly outside of the War Factory. The War Factory does survive, the barracks does survive, and even that under construction cold fusion reactor does survive. Our team in the north is weakened, but they are not dead yet as they move forward. Once again, these late, these nuclear battle masters, a blessing and a curse as once again, Cool Me's army explodes. EA tries to step forward, his laser paladins getting wasted in the nuclear wasteland that lays behind. EA and Kif joining forces now to try and break the front line of Sigoro. The Tomahawks breaking through the artillery of the GLA player. Meanwhile, I'm not actually sure, a fuel air bomb perhaps, comes in a total miss there as most of the army has already evacuated. And finally, it looks like EA and Kif have broken the front line, but can they continue the pressure? Can they keep the fight up? They've been able to absorb the first round of defenses. Bunker comes in. Bunker able to help hold this off. More nuclear battle masters to the front line. Katusha. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But uh, carpet bombing coming in from Sigoro. Mostly a big mess. Gatling tanks going to retreat. And it looks like once again the A-10 Warthogs coming in for Sigoro. Big emphasis on trying to use those support powers. We got a uh, couple of seconds until that particle cannon is online. We'll see what Sigoro is actually able to do with it. Only 50 seconds later, EA's particle cannon comes online. So they're coming neck and neck. But Cool Me's got a nuke ready to go as well. So Particle Cannon ready to fire off. A couple of Scorpion tanks and a lot of infantry directly in the way, as well as that GLA big artillery. And there goes at least one super weapon. 
26 seconds on EA's particle cannon, and the nuke is ready to fire off as well. Seguro starting to move forward. Maybe a fuel air bomb coming in for the one, two punch. Almost right in the middle of the army, he lands it, and he is going to be able to decimate the infantry, but not so much the rest of the army. Kiff doing a good job of keeping his army out of harm's way, at least for the current moment. Particle Cannon is ready. I'm not sure how much vision EA actually has. Nuke is ready to fire off, and it looks like everyone's going to try and clear the area. He's going to hit the War Factory and the Particle Cannons of EA. Gets the War Factory, gets maybe the power, but not enough of it to actually take it offline. Particle Cannon ready to fire up. He's hunting that nuclear Battlemaster army, and he's just pressing forward. Cool Me with a detonation-focused army is going to have to drive as far into enemy territory as he can, but he doesn't find the value that he was looking for. The infantry get cleaned up a little bit there on the exit, but the Particle Cannon is still taking a couple of pot shots on the random tank hunters that are still around. Cool Me presses forward. Not sure that he's actually going to be able to press any further forward as he does have a couple of nuclear battle masters here. And yeah, the defense plus the particle cannons, particle tanks, are just too much. Carpet bombing wasn't close enough to the particle cannon to actually break it. But we are claiming, we are getting close to a new particle cannon coming in. Supply stashes getting hit. Although it looks like, uh, you know, it's, it's a depleted ore mine, so I guess it's still providing a little bit of resources, but not nearly as much. Yeah, I feel like this map needs some more attack pads as a secret tunnel emerges in the back of Cool Me's base. Particle cannon directly on top of it, a defensive particle cannon, but it does look like it maybe is doing some splash damage and burning up some friendly units. And that one Scorpion tank thought he could survive, but even he gets cleaned up. The nuke survives with four minutes on the clock, but that is not where Sigoro wanted to use that particle cannon. And now actually <laughs> a surprise attack as another particle cannon is gonna kick up and burn through that nuke. He's gonna go for the internet center as well stop those hackers from generating more income for cool me at least one internet center gets eliminated and it uh, looks like there are a couple of more still around another aurora bomber goes down it's all about spreading out against these nuclear battle masters so that they do more friendly fire than damage to you particle tanks seem really good Vertical cannons now, six of them on the field, firing off every few seconds, it feels like. A-10 Warthogs coming in, mostly going to be a miss, but they will get the War Factory. The army still stands, and the Carpet Bomb is starting to make some headway. Claims another supply drop zone from EA. Tomahawks against Particle Tanks. And once again, the offensive from the south is met by a particle cannon. Segoro burning through so many GLA units. The bunker will hold in the north with the Gatling cannon while the carpet bomb comes in from Segoro. Or the Moab, no, the carpet bomb comes in. He gets the army a little bit on the retreat. The Aurora finds its mark, cleans up another K artillery. The defense from both teams too strong to be penetrated by the other. Absolutely insane chaos as soon as any engagement starts. But it's definitely a, uh, a run right down the middle. Poor one mechanic just got left behind, unfortunately, by EA. Supply centers on both sides being targeted down. 
Particle Cannon sees its mark, going for the secondary economy, the power plants as well, as Seguro might be cut down at the knees as he goes into low power mode, giving a little bit of a break to EA as he's going to be starting up perhaps another Particle Cannon on top of the War Factories. One, two, three, get sold off or eliminated. EA finding the damage, but at the same time, his own front door is being knocked on. Hello, it's Nuclear Battlemaster, and we are here to play. Not enough forces, and the Laser Paladins and the Rocket Squads should be able to deal with what little Red Guard make it through the front line. Tomahawks pressing forward. Power is back online in Segoro's base. I think he's trying to buy time to ensure that he can have his particle cannons online. Those chain reactions are just insane. Burning through more laser tanks as Segoro's one clicks are perhaps the strongest thing about his army. I know those two particle tanks actually surviving that laser from the sky, the real particle cannon. Fuel air bomb does not find its mark, but the carpet bombing does once again eliminating the war factory. So much about this game seems to be just hitting the production again and again. Scorpion tanks pressing forward in combination with the A-10 Warthogs trying to shut down the economy once again. The power's back online, the War Factory's back online, but EA and Kif don't have enough to break through the defenses. The same story being told again and again. The carpet bombing going for the War Factory in the south, but it doesn't find its mark. The defense just quite good enough, but not through a conventional means, but through almost a suicidal means. Those nuclear battle masters, you really do have to eliminate them from a distance. Keep your own units out of their range when they go down. A minute and a half until the next particle cannon from either side. Fuel air bomb not quite gonna land. A-10 Warthogs not quite gonna land as the reinforcements come in. And maybe it's more about this next wave as the first wave has fallen once again on the front line of Seguro. Particle cannons have all but been eliminated. Seguro's front line has been broken. It's only up to cool me and oh, why keep driving directly next to those nuclear battle masters? He did manage to escape for the most part. Cool me desperately trying to extend Segoro's life. EA and Kif joining forces perhaps to actually do some fundamental damage. It really feels like killing your opponent's production matters so much more than eliminating the army because the armies just get replaced by the time you get to the other side and the armies get cleaned up in a quarter of a second anyways. Those nuclear battle masters are just so ridiculous. Another carpet bombing eliminated before it actually finds its mark. And it looks like Segoro has been broken, his war factory hanging on by a literal thread. And there it goes. His command center is next. He's got no defense left. Kif and EA have been able to do it. Another particle cannon ready to fire off. He might actually want to hit those laser, those nuclear battle masters before they can actually get up close and personal with his units. Once again, the nuclear battle masters clearing the front line. The command center has survived for the current moment. One almost dead scorpion, one fully heroic RPG trooper trying to take it down. And it looks like they barely will get it before they just get destroyed. Segoro has mostly fallen. Maybe he's got something somewhere to keep him in this match, 
But it looks like it's just one particle cannon, which I think is back online. I think he's got enough electricity with like three or four power plants sitting right there. There's the fire sail. And it looks like Segoro is out of the match. So it is all coming down to Cool Me, who I don't think is going to be able to survive. Scudstorm coming online five minutes on the clock. If Cool Me had three nukes and uh, EA had no particle cannons, maybe there would have been a chance there. But GG gets called. Cool Me and Sigoro going to fall to pieces there. And it looks like that will do it for this game. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the explosive action here in General's Evolution. And uh, I'm going to put the developer's Twitter in the description if you want to follow them for updates. If you want, uh, if you guys didn't know, one of the main developers, Gunship Mark II, lives in Ukraine. And uh, so we all wish him the best and hope that he's able to stay safe. And so I'll link his Twitter if you want to be able to follow him and see uh, hopefully when he updates but that will do it for this video thank you all very much for watching and this is cyber signing out